get started. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm so excited. It's definitely my honor and privilege to introduce our two guests today, Catherine Dr. Berndorf of the Motherhood Center and Chief Content Officer of Goop, Elise Lemon. Uh, I am Amy Seamus. I'm on the events and experiences here team here at Google. I've been at Google almost almost seven years, um, but with two maternity leaves back to back. So it feels long, but there was a chunk sort of kind of missing um, as I started my other career as a mom. Uh, but we're here today because I actually saw Elise interview Dr. Berndorf at the InGoop Health Summit in January in New York City, and she was on a panel, and I was sitting in the audience. My son was seven and a half months old at the time, and everything you were saying resonated with me, which I'm sure a lot of you here, same as we'll be hearing more from you. And then I thought, I ran up to Elise at the end of the summit, I said, we've got to do something at Google. And then life got in the way, and it took me a while, but we, uh, you had your podcast, and it was the third ever Goop podcast, and you deep dove on this conversation of postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression, and what you're calling the motherhood shift, which I love. And that was it. That was a sign for me. I said, let's get these ladies to Google. A lot of people will want to hear from you and talk about this, these issues. Um, we're very fortunate at Google because we have a wonderful benefits team and a great paid maternal and paternal leave, but that's not to say that Google isn't a very exhausting and demanding place to work, as it should be. We are Google, but there is a lot to be learned when we are in this post-baby, postpartum phase, mm -hmm. um, which is why I thought that not only myself would love to learn more and, you know, as I already said to you guys, become your best friends forever, um, but that everyone else would learn a lot um, about this particular issue and how we can work through these changes while we're at work. Um, and I would of course be remiss if I didn't mention that May is Mental Health Month, so Google is hosting a series of talks throughout the month of May to dive deeper into specific parts of mental health, and I know we're going to address it a little bit in our conversation today. Um, but you know, just know that mental health has a wide variety of looks and feels um, and you know, one in five people suffer some, from some version of it. So if there is anything you know, you're feeling you need more out of Google and from our benefits team, you know, be sure to look things up this month on Go Mental Health and look out for different talks throughout the rest of the month. Um, so with all of that said, um, let's get to going. So again, um, I have two young boys. I've only been back from my second maternity leave for seven and a half months, which feels so short yet so long. And um, navigating being a working mom is difficult. And um, it was so wonderful when I was hearing that not only anecdotally is it difficult, but scientifically and biologically it is in fact difficult. Mm -hmm. So while I had very high functioning pregnancies and postpartum experiences, that was not the case certainly for all of my mommy friends. And um, so I want to just start today with asking what is postpartum anxiety? What is postpartum depression? What's the difference? And then also I know you're kind of coining a new term um, in that sphere. So starting there. Starting there. Okay. <laughs> and that'll be the whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it short. Yeah. Um, well, I think postpartum is just after birth, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody is postpartum mm -hmm. once they have a kid. Mm -hmm. And there's a normal range of adjustment, mm -hmm. right? So we were just talking about this. Everybody has something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to go all the way to a disorder, mm -hmm. right? So what you're referring to is what we're calling perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, mm -hmm. PMAD, mm -hmm. PMADs. And that is the new phrase for PPD, mm -hmm. which people are starting, thankfully, to recognize postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the catch-all phrase, mm -hmm. or postpartum. People say, did you have postpartum? Yeah. And that's a, and that sort of whisper. Mm -hmm. That's like beyond the adjustment, beyond mm -hmm. the normal adjustment. But it doesn't capture it all, right? Mm -hmm. So people are missed because they think, postpartum depression, I'm not depressed. So they get confused. And so that's why when you guys, when Goop wanted to talk about anxiety, I thought it was mm -hmm. great. It's not new. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't discussed. Mm -hmm. So um, there can be normal, look, when you have a kid, everyone gets, you know, things change. And I think we uh, are, are very adaptive, thankfully. And so everyone's a little bit anxious because you're taking care of this totally dependent mm -hmm. creature. Mm -hmm. You may not know how, you probably don't know how, mm -hmm. and you have to figure it out. Um, and so everyone's a bit anxious. But when it goes beyond just anxiety that you can get to work, do your things, do your normal um, daily routines, then we're getting into trouble. And that may be in the anxious realm and in a depressive realm. Mm -hmm. And I can 
blather on forever about mm -hmm. those things. But so just know it's it's normal to have a little bit of an adjustment. Of course. How could you not? It's like the most profound identity shift mm -hmm. imaginable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember, and this is an all too uh, intimate story, I'm sure, but when I was, <laughs> it's my poor husband sitting in the audience, but I was, I think, three or four weeks postpartum with my oldest son, and I was so happy, and I ran up to him, just hysterical sobs, mm -hmm. hugging him, saying it was the happiest I'd ever been, but yet I was crying. crying. And I even said, once I lose the baby weight, this will be the best ever. <laughs> and I mean, I look back on it now, like you, what was going on there? But, and, and again, I was so happy. Right. So it wasn't anything to be concerned about at the time, but it is, the emotions are intense. certainly there and so right. intense. Well, that's the blues. Yeah. Right. And that's almost everybody. I say to, to patients and to friends, you're the unusual person who doesn't have that. You described yeah. it perfectly. Yeah. Happy, sad, we call it emotional lability, sort of the ups and downs, it's super intense. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you're losing your mind for that moment or for that those few minutes, but you're not. Yeah. It, that, that's the hormonal fluctuation that, that is happening after delivery. And completely normal, just totally biologically normal. what happens. Absolutely. Which is again, what is so wonderful to hear. And I, normal's not the right word, but you know, Typical, to know that common. Yeah. Happens mm -hmm. to almost everybody. Yeah. So talk about the Motherhood Center, which opened in New York City how long ago? Just over a year ago. A year ago, hopefully yeah. to the opening offices all over. Um, and just to note for people, I know a bunch of you who had emailed me, it's not just for people who are currently pregnant, which if you are, congratulations. Um, uh, or if you just had a baby, but if you are thinking about having a baby. Yep. So talk about the Motherhood Center, what it is and how it helps. So we opened um, this place called the Motherhood Center, mm -hmm. um, which is trying to help women who are uh, and families trying to conceive, mm -hmm. thinking about conceiving, mm -hmm. so fertility issues, mm -hmm. those who are pregnant, and then those in the postpartum. Mm -hmm. So it's really the perinatal experience. That's mm -hmm. what that time frame is, mm -hmm. right? And um, I know we're called the Motherhood Center, but as I see men out there and I know who are dads, I think <laughs> like we really do, we also address, it's really a family issue, and I think maybe that's, we'll talk some of that. Mm -hmm later um, that it's not just about the mom, but we really wanted a place where we could, we've sort of turned ourselves into the mothering center. Mm -hmm. So we're really helping women um, go through the adjustment mm -hmm. and the transition into motherhood. Mm -hmm. And the dads come on Fridays, or the partners, <laughs> and we have a group for just them. And we also bring them into different kinds of family groups so that they can talk about their experience in this transition. But we go from, just to tell you a bit, it's a comprehensive treatment center. Mm -hmm. Nothing like this exists in the country. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to create this pilot program that we hope we can nail so that we can make it a, um, a place that could be in other areas mm -hmm. of the, the country, helping women adjust to motherhood. But it's not just those who are well and having the normal adjustment. We are also dealing with women who are just shy of going into the hospital, right? So who are really needing a comprehensive day program. They, they're just not making it out there. They're, they're not getting out of the house. They're not getting to prenatal care. They're not going to their pediatricians afterwards. They're just not able to function as well as they should. And these are high functioning yeah. women um, who just are so down or so anxious. We see a lot of postpartum OCD. That's mm -hmm. one of the postpartum mm -hmm. anxiety disorders. We see all kinds of things and they're just not, they're not making it. And so they come in for therapies from, group therapies from 9.45 to 2.45 and we have an on-site nursery. So they bring the babies and we help them kind of figure out how to be with a baby. Mm -hmm. Are they too attached? Are they not? Are they too detached? Mm -hmm. So different iterations of, of bonding and attachment we address um, with the new moms. It's so amazing. Yeah. How's it going? It's going really well. It's, okay. it, it, it's like, it's so much fun. And I think those of us who've come together are so passionate about yeah. this time period and, and treatment that is so lacking. There's a dearth of this kind of treatment in the country. Um, and I think that to see women go from struggling mm -hmm. so much and feeling like they're never going to be able to be the mother they want to be yeah. to within two to four to six weeks walking out of there confident and feeling like they got this. Mm -hmm. You know, we have graduates come back and talk to the moms who are newly coming in and it is it, like goosebumps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said it certainly, the passion is there. Once you, even in just meetings at Google, once you identify that somebody else is a mom, it is... Yeah. Connection. There's an immediate switch in connection, and people yep. are so passionate about this topic, and totally. feeling so em feeling empowered is mm -hmm. difficult right. during the postpartum time frame. So, 
Um, so Elise, to you, also a mom of two boys. Yeah. Boy moms. Um, girl moms are great. Everything's all good. Babies are all good. Um, but you are the chief content officer of Goop. Mm -hmm. You have to see so much come across your desk. Mm -hmm. So how did you sift out Catherine and the Motherhood Center and say, this is something that we need to promote. This is so brand right. This energy is so great. Mm -hmm. um, what was it that struck you? about this that's different than everything else I'm sure you you mm -hmm. see. So um, before actually I wish I had met Catherine when I was had my first child. Mm -hmm. I'm sad that I didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> different. <laughs> I was not at, like everyone I don't know anyone who's well equipped for parenthood. Um, definitely not well equipped and after I had my first child um, I felt really Bad. It was probably a year after, and I was talking to um, a doctor, this doctor Alejandro Younger, and I was like, "What's wrong with me? Like, I don't feel good. I'm, I'm tired of being told that it's because I have a child because I was getting really good mm -hmm. sleep." Um, and he put me on his clean program. He was like, "Let's get you more vitamin D." He's just like, "We're just gonna, like, I'm just gonna put something based on what I think is probably going on." Um, vitamin B clean program. I felt incredible. I felt dramatically better six weeks later. Um, and in that process, he introduced me to this doctor in the Australian bush. His name's Oscar Saralak, and he was working on this concept called postnatal depletion. Mm -hmm. And he was like, there's just no nothing in literature about this, but he was observing it sort of in this family clinic in rural Australia, these women who would have multiple children, and every time they would present, it was, they were more depleted more rundown and um, he was like this is so weird there's there's stuff on postpartum depression not enough and then there's nothing about depletion mm -hmm. and I did a story with him and it was incredibly like the response was insane women were just tons of email because essentially he's like for, he believes for seven to ten years like it can take seven to ten years to recover w women start in a sort of depleted state already mm -hmm. they even if you have the best intention to eat perfectly, like I don't know anyone who does, like, and our food is not amazing, and um, you sort of start behind the starting block, you have a child, they take everything that they need from you, all the fat in your brain, um, <laughs> and you end up worse off, and we all know from having a baby that you go to the doctor a lot, and then as soon as you have the baby, no one cares about you. <laughs> you have like one checkup where they're like, looks fine. I think your abs aren't separated. You can have sex with your husband. See you in a year. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so the story, people were like, this is me. This is like ex describing the last decade of my life. Mm -hmm. um, this like pr profound resonance. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wow, we really need to talk more about what's happening. Because I think there's like a world of mom blogs and there's a this perception issue of people being like, this is me and my perfectly swaddled, clothed child, mm -hmm. and I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. And the, the reality of that women everywhere are struggling, and then the whole the psychological part came in through Berndorf and the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a mom at Goop who was really struggling. Just She wouldn't mind me sharing that, but just like extreme panic attacks. She had had anxiety before. She was great after, during her pregnancy, and then was not postpartum depression, but like OCD anxiety to the extent that she was like, "I'm certifiable. Like, I I need a hospital. I need like she couldn't function. Could not function, and so Berndorf quarterbacked her to function. I'd say yeah. she's doing great. She's doing great. So that's sort of the long. It was just like this needs to be something that we talk about. So culturally. you're truly filling a void. There isn't anything else. <laughs> There's nothing. That's incredible. There, is, there are individuals out there. I have mm -hmm. colleagues across the country who mm -hmm. are doing this kind of work who are amazing, mm -hmm. who are in the field of reproductive and perinatal um, psychiatry, psychology. But they're all sort of individuals. I mean, they tend to be in big cities, like my mm -hmm. good friends in L.A. and mm -hmm. Chicago, New York. But they're not. They're, they're, we wanted to create a center, a community, mm -hmm. where this, um, where we could really um, be the experts in this and try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right. We we have a lot of creative space to do that. We're a startup. Yeah. So we really, you know, we were a group of passionate clinicians who came together trying to fill a need. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of what solve for something that is missing, 
because we weren't getting it done. And you know, I come from the academic world, the mm -hmm. ivory tower. Can't even. People would say to me, you know, my phone number on the internet is still from when I was a resident in Cornell. <laughs> so it's like ridiculous. You can't even get into yeah. the. You know. So it, it's hard. It's a very fortressed world out there. Medicine, it, you know, you know from it from your family. But like, if you don't know someone in the field, it's very hard to break in. Yeah. And then you get to mental health. Forget physical health. Hard enough. Mental health, and that's why May this month is so important mm -hmm. to talk about it. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody wants to talk about this. The mm -hmm. fact that you'll even say like you had this hard time, postpartum, is novel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yes, celebrities are coming out. They're talking mm -hmm. about it. Um, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the word on the street is it's out there. But yeah. again, it's getting mistaken as, oh, it, I didn't have depression. I didn't have that postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. It used to be, I would say five, 10 years ago, I, when I would get calls, it would be like somebody killed their child, yeah. right? It's very their extreme. Infant, mm -hmm. right? so, and everyone thought that was postpartum mm -hmm. depression. It's not. That's not. That is postpartum psychosis. Mm -hmm. When you lose touch with reality and you have these... Um, thoughts that like you're saving your child if you kill them because you're so bad. Yeah. These are delusions. Mm -hmm. This is a person who is out of touch with reality because as I always say, no mother in their right mind mm -hmm. would hurt their child, mm -hmm. right? That's not, so, so no one talks about it because they're like, mm -hmm. oh, if I tell anyone, mm -hmm. I mean, you, there was a it's Sacramento different. story not long ago mm -hmm. where a woman told her, uh, you know, someone in the pediatrician's office or OB's office and they called the cops. Mm -hmm. And then the then it became a you know or ACS comes in you know adult child services. No one knows what's going to happen if they admit that they're struggling. Mm -hmm. They think they're going to think I'm a bad mom. They're going to think I'm a bad person. Mm -hmm. That I might try and hurt my kid like those horrible sensationalized news stories I've heard about. Yeah. So the fact that we're having just a you know a conversation about routine stuff that yeah. that I cannot you know one in five women struggle. So. And, and dads too. That has to be underreported. I yeah. totally. Well, the number's I mean, one in seven. I go with one in five because for <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's underreported, underdiagnosed, <laughs> undertreated. Yeah. And dads too. Yeah. Um, well, and I think what's amazing, and this is um, moving a bit away from motherhood center, but obviously tangentially tied to it, and somebody else that was on Goop, and the Clarity Cleanse. Mm -hmm. So, wonderful book. If you haven't read it, I forget the author's name. Habib Sadegi. Yeah. And he was actually at the first Goop Summit. Mm -hmm. I'm a Goop fan, if you can tell. Um, <laughs> next <laughs> summit is in three weeks, June 9th, be there, LA. Uh, but he talks about actually that mental health and physical health are the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so while we're still working to get there and destigmatize that mental health, yep. all of that is so closely tied to everything inside your body. Yep. And so if you're holding on to something from the past mentally, there will be a physical manifestation of it at some point. There's a great book by um, a trauma expert, Bessel van der Kolk, called The Body Keeps the Score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just love the title yeah. because I feel like it says it all, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You don't escape your past, no. you don't escape your mind, your body, no. your trauma, everyone's got something mm -hmm. that lives in the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And or, it will yeah, come or the mind. Or to the channel mind. our other favorite parenting expert, Robin Berman. Yeah. Um, parenting becoming a parent creates a crisis to you because it like forces every the way you were parented to the surface. And mm -hmm. suddenly it's like, what kind of mother am I gonna be? What kind of mothering did I not get? Like just a total and it's not, yeah, it's a crisis. I don't, and I don't think people are necessarily even, they're not conscious of that. No. Sometimes you are. I mean, I think we, with Permission to Parrot, which is a wonderful book, if you haven't read it, um, and you just so happen to be the author's best friend, which yeah. is adorable. Uh, you know, my husband and I talk about this often with, we try to create for our boys the opposite of what we had. Mm -hmm. But as we're in the midst of seeing all of our friends also become parents is very interesting because some of them just directly want to copy that because they had such wonderful, so they seem idyllic childhoods. But it is it is an act of becoming a parent mm -hmm. and you chose it the minute you got pregnant, but it isn't something that is fully fleshed out in your brain mm -hmm. until you start seeing these little yeah. things run around. And then there's this idea that it's all supposed to be natural, right? Yeah. Like there is no act and you're supposed to know how to breastfeed. Yeah. And I mean, these things that are not natural, I'm sorry, but oh, like, no. <laughs> um, and, and oh. what's a natural birth? And right. that conversation drives me nuts too. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, like, wow. it starts, like the judgment starts. Oh, I mean, what kind of birth are you going to have? What, I mean, not to just, I'm not complain, I'm just going to complain, yeah. but <laughs> it's, a, it's complicated. And but I also think too, it, that's another thing about going back to once you're, when you're pregnant, you are the princess. And once you have the baby, you're the peasant. 
even with when you were had the lactation consultant come, I remember I thought this was for me because I w it was so oh, yeah. painful and so hard the first time. And they're like, nope, nope, all about the baby. And like, but what? How do I? No, mm -hmm. I, can I get some help over here? Culturally, too? we've missed the boat. We've yeah. missed the boat. And, and again, that's why what we're finding when these women leave the motherhood center is they are repleted. Mm -hmm. To yeah. go back to that depleted word, mm -hmm. they feel cared for, nourished. Mm -hmm. We do not do that for moms. No. Mm -hmm. It's all about the baby. Mm -hmm. You know, you're celebrated when you're pregnant, you're, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But the minute that kid's out, all eyes on the baby. Mm -hmm. And great, but what about the mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I hope there is a shift. I mean, at least, again, in my small circle, we always do, when, when a baby's born, it's not about holding that new baby, it's, where's your laundry? Mm -hmm. And where what can I do for you? Because right. I will marry Poppins this because right. Right. that's selfishly what mm -hmm. I would like to have. Right. So, but it is you you don't know until you know, yeah. and it's but how do we educate? So obviously motherhood center, but at least what other opportunities are out there? I guess opportunity is the wrong word, but what other things are in place mm -hmm. for women to go to and get this sort of resource? Obviously, you mm -hmm. know if we can't all be in New York City, which as Googlers, we're lucky because we potentially do work in New York and we can visit and we yeah. will. Yeah. But you know, for those of us who can't, you know, digital's key right now. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 what resources are out there? Well, other I, than Goop, of course. Other than Goop <laughs> and hopefully more motherhood centers. Mm -hmm. Um, to I mean there I I wouldn't it's hard to say I mean I'd say it's piecing together things that work for you mm -hmm. it's and a lot of it it's like the we can learn a lot from the airline industry like you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself yes. first before you help other people mm -hmm. and I think it's it's a familial conversation I think it's a, a forced conversation with partners too of like I need to be a prior I need to be as prioritized mm -hmm. as my child mm -hmm. um, and that needs to be a social conversation. That needs to be a like, cultural conversation mm -hmm. um, of, you know, we were talking about this before. I'm married to a really lovely man. <laughs> um, he's great. He has a far less stressful career. And he's a, he's a really good dad. I still do 60% of the work. Mm -hmm. um, and he is <laughs> applauded. Like, he is celebrated as an amazing dad because mm -hmm. sometimes he drops our kid off at preschool. <laughs> and, you know, he puts on no the bed. Yeah. 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 And, like, I am not celebrated. I'm an absent mom, um, even though I do more of the work. And so it's, it's even just bringing awareness to that. And then I think in order for things to change, it's connecting with women who are not yet mothers mm -hmm. because nobody knows. Like, I just was shocked mm -hmm. I was it was before I was at Goop but when I had my first child and I was eight months pregnant and I went to the benefits office for my mm -hmm. mater and I was like oh so I'll be on maternity leave and she's like okay so you're gonna be you'll be paid and this was better this is far better than a vast majority of Americans like we'll, we're gonna pay you for six weeks and then you go on disability I was like I can't survive on disability like what are you talking about mm -hmm. like I thought I had a 12 week mm -hmm. leave mm -hmm. and I think you know, 27% um, of women are back at work two weeks after mm -hmm. having a baby because they have no family leave. And then you start this whole cycle, yeah, a oh, pernicious cycle. And I was furious. Yeah. I was so mad, not only at my company, but also at col the culture. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's not a good way to start. That's not Being a good a way to become a mom yeah. either. No, it's not good for anyone. It's funny. I was a resident when I had my first kid, who's now 19, and I didn't know what I got either. And I'm like, I don't even know if there's maternity leave. I was one of the few residents to get pregnant during residency in those years. And I went in, and I'm like, what do I, what's the deal? And they said, six weeks. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a C-section, you'll get mm -hmm. eight. Mm -hmm. This is at a hospital, <laughs> right? I mean, it's so yeah. ironic. Yeah. It was d dismal. Well I, well, I will say, to Google's credit, yeah, you guys win. We, you guys do it right. We have an incredible maternal, maternity and paternity leave yeah. policy. Um, and for those of you thinking about getting pregnant and thinking, I don't need all that, you need it all. Take mm -hmm. it all. There's never a day you'll wish you didn't do that. Um, but we also, and I said when I opened this talk, we have uh, the expectation when you're working here is incredibly high. And it is so difficult to be a mom and have all of those expectations. So. I agree with you that it starts with women who haven't had mm -hmm. children. And I, you know, I have a lovely manager and he's so responsive to my needs. I, I force it, 
because I always have these conversations with him, but not everyone is like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it to be a little trickier with peers mm -hmm. who don't have children. So what, I mean, I'm sure you've mm -hmm. seen New York City, you've got to have some high powered ladies coming in there oh, yeah. with, so what is some advice to help, you know, moms in high powered jobs deal with women that don't have kids who may want to, and it's, it's no one's fault, but it is an interesting mm -hmm. place to navigate. Um, with when you get that call yesterday, my son, we had to take him to the doctor unexpectedly at 2.30 p.m. and so I had to work from home and you know you get some mm -hmm. it, it's very difficult um, it, it, well it's a it's a systemic issue yes right and we look at it as the mother's problem yeah um, I'm not sure if dads are running home or mm -hmm. you know as much or partners are running mm -hmm. home but the primary caretaker whoever that is typically the mom mm -hmm. is really um, disadvantaged mm -hmm. which should not be the case yeah. this is a fan I mean do we want to populate this country yeah. uh, you know mm -hmm. but so isn't this everyone's issue yeah. isn't it a natural thing mm -hmm. so why it's considered um, mm -hmm. a problem uh, you know and everyone's hiding you know can you cover for me while I run out yeah it's like what yeah, yeah. so again it, it's hard but I think that um, it has to be a community a familial we, yeah. we have to it, it's it's a it's a cultural systemic issue and you're right even yesterday i kind of cowered when i said well i've got to take him to the doctor because he might have bronchitis like you know you it should is. be there yeah you should be able to go or your partner should be able to go that should that's normal yeah yeah normal we were using right, that word yeah. but, mm. but um, i and you're right i mean but it is difficult for people but i think the verbiage around it is so important well i think and i think it Honestly, it's an issue that needs to start with like with men, I think, okay. to start. They, one, they have, like, when you look at the research, they have the power to advocate mm -hmm. change, and I think they feel shy about it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a woman's issue, and it's not really my place. Mm -hmm. But they're the, it's, it's sadly going to be the most, well, they can. It's a numbers game. They it's just, a numbers game. Mm -hmm. Like, women and minorities, when they advocate for themselves, are, it's not, it doesn't always go well. Um, men, when they advocate, are seen as like big-hearted. Mm -hmm. um, it's positive. Mm -hmm. So men need to start advocating for it. Um, they need to make sure that there are women in the room. Mm -hmm. um, they need to model it mm -hmm. and make sure that the environment is one that is sort of ideally. And this is this is it only works in places like Goop and Google, mm -hmm. but that they're setting reasonable work hours and not inundating people on the weekends and letting w mothers in particular do their work when they can do their work. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want something done, ask a mom. <laughs> I don't oh, know any busy mom, mom. Yeah, yeah, who falls mm -hmm. down on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it has to start, it has to be that sort of conversation. Do the men take it? I'm wondering at Goop and at Google, do they take maternity or paternity? Because I think that that's another issue is that they're, oh, they'll take a week or two. And again, I don't mean to stereotype, but are they modeling it are mm -hmm. they taking it or are they seen as somehow weaker if they actually use it so i don't know the stats on that i'm sure we can get it um but <laughs> i do know that my my husband he works for a different tech company and he did take his two mm -hmm. paternity leaves mm -hmm. thank you very much that's a gift we'll certainly never want to give back and um, I know my brother-in-law works at Google and he'll be taking his paternity leave. Mm -hmm. So it certainly is becoming it's more, encouraged. It's, yeah. it's certainly the encouraged. The culture encouraged. Um, you guys are the cutting edge. I yeah. mean, you are leading the way. But even for us, and I am um, much more I'm glass half full, so I see us as being, it, it's such a wonderful experience and the amount of time we get off. But even, you know, two weeks ago when my son was who turned one, um, there was a gal in Canada who I was chatting with and she, her son also just turned one and she just got back from maternity leave mm -hmm. and she too works at Google. So it is very interesting. interesting. Um, and I certainly am so happy to have what we have, but it, it isn't perfect. Right. Um, right. And what is the right amount of time for a woman to have off mm -hmm. is obviously different per woman, mm -hmm. but should we should have a larger spectrum yeah. of... That's the thing. I mean, I'm in some ways not maybe a good representative but <laughs> when i had my second child it was this will this will probably drive you crazy mm -hmm. um it was it was an incredibly busy time and i just brought him to work i i stayed home for six weeks and then i just brought my baby to work for eight weeks i think and it was awesome did anybody mm -hmm. care 
No, everyone yeah. loved it. I mean, he just was like the office baby. He'd be napping in everyone's <laughs> arms. I nursed him at work. Yeah. Um, and sure, like if it had been a different time, I would have stayed away for longer. But that worked for me. And that what also works for me is I don't, I, if I need to go to the doctor, I go mm -hmm. to the doctor without guilt. Okay. Or I, I work, uh, he goes to a co-op nursery school, so I work at the school mm -hmm. um, one day a month, et cetera. Like that's what I need mm -hmm. is prolonged and constant mm -hmm. flexibility. That's the word. Yeah. That's and I word. get, I definitely get my job done, mm -hmm. but it has to be within the confines of, of flexible. And I, I'm fine with that for my whole team, many of whom are not moms. I'm like, I don't care if you are in Alaska and your work is done, like, it's fine. Yeah, more power to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. flexibility is certainly key. So before I open it up to Q&A, because I'm sure a lot of people have questions and we have some questions that will be coming from online, it, my, one of my last questions is how do we destigmatize or normalize uh, you know, postpartum anxiety or postpartum depression? How, how can we make it a more welcome environment for women to talk about it, not only at a center or you know, behind closed doors with their managers or girlfriends? Um, is it simply just talking about it? Is it men talking mm -hmm. about it? Is it women without children talking about it because Everybody. they've seen it? Talking, okay. talking, talking. You cannot okay. talk enough about it okay. mm -hmm. to sort to help people feel, uh, to normalize the, uh, the transition, mm -hmm. that it's hard, to validate their varied experiences. It's different for everyone. But talking is key and, yeah. and, 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 and in a non-judgmental way, mm -hmm. right? There's yeah. no judgment. Right? Whether you work you, you, outside the home or work inside, mm -hmm. the, wherever it is, like you can't. People are different, and we want to respect their different experiences vis-a-vis -vis motherhood, parenthood, and so just in a way, just being curious, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Asking, like, how's it going for you? I always say, um, you know, doctors don't like to not know answers, mm -hmm. and they'll say, well, I don't, I don't ask women about postpartum anxiety or depression because I, I don't treat it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not the expert like you. I don't know what to do. And I said, oh. We have a long way to go. Yeah. But um, <laughs> you don't have to know what scales, to, what questions to ask. Just look them in the eye, hold their gaze, and right. say, how are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't move. Yeah. And look at them. Yeah. And often people burst into tears. Yeah. And they're like, no one's asked how I am. Yeah. Right? It's all about this cute little baby. Yeah. Right? But you got to just look someone in the eye. Just have a real conversation. Not like, hey, how you doing? Oh, mm -hmm. it's great. Right? Right? Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Just like have the conversation, just have a real conversation. I absolutely yeah. love that. And I was talking to a teammate of mine about something very similar with just ask. You might feel yes. uncomfortable. You might know what, know what to ask, yeah. but just do exactly what you said. Yeah. I, um, a few months ago, I was listening to the Oprah Winfrey podcast and she was interviewing Sheryl Sandberg. And this is, she was talking about, you know, obviously her husband died and people were, you know, you know, with trepidation circling the issue. And she said, I'm always thinking about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can always ask me. Mm -hmm. And while this being becoming a mother is a much happier thing, but you can always ask me how I'm doing because I'm always thinking about my children. And you and don't so, have to know what to say. That's yeah. the thing. You can even say, I don't really know how to ask you this, but I'm, I know you're probably like, yeah. how you doing? Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. And you don't have to know the answer. You can Google it. Yeah. <laughs> we do something at Goop um, on occasion for meetings where we run, we just quickly go around the room and people say either personal and work or combination or however you want to do it. Are you red, yellow, green? Mm -hmm. And it's very helpful just to one and yeah. people can explain or they don't have to explain. But I think it also, in any context, it gives greater context mm -hmm. to any interaction yeah. of just like, I might be red because maybe I was up all night with a mm -hmm. sick kid and mm -hmm. it, I might not be in a great mood and it's not you. But I, I think it that. also creates like a, it's, it's important, you know, what happens at home. It, yeah. The two are so intermingled now. Yeah. And also at home, when you get home. Yeah. With you asking your partner. Yeah. You better be red, yellow, or green. Um, okay, any questions in the audience? Okay, too shy? We've got some on the door. We just answered everyone's questions. I know, no, we have lots coming okay. up. So, okay, first one on here. What can husbands do to support their spouse when they're suffering from postpartum depression? Even later when my wife seems to have come out of it but isn't 100% of her earlier self, can I do anything to make her feel better outside of the medical help she is and was getting? Great question. Awesome question. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you can ask. I, I, you know, people don't often or won't volunteer what they need, but I'll often say, you know, we're not mind readers. Mm -hmm. Ask, mm -hmm. like, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? 
and observe, see what she's struggling with, where are areas in which you can be helpful. But, you know, um, you may not know what, you know, the love languages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you may not know what her, what would feel cared for for her and vice versa. So you asking, mm -hmm. what can I do to help you? You don't seem entirely yourself. What am I missing? What are we not doing here? Are you getting, you know, are you, are there ways in which you can help her get to the help she needs? Is mm -hmm. she getting uh, mental health help? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, is that being, are the, are the needs being met? Because, you know, you can feel with, with, with proper treatment, mm -hmm. um, everyone feels better mm -hmm. and everyone gets well. And a lot of times women will say, I feel even better than I ever felt because maybe they were, they had a simmering depression or they'd always been sort of chronically anxious and it didn't come to light mm -hmm. until they were postpartum and then it just blew up. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes with proper treatment, you really can be even better. <laughs> so if, if that's not the case and continue to persist, don't ever give up. If you feel like, um, your wife's come out of it, but it's not quite that. Just, just don't give up. Keep pushing until you get to a place that feels right, feels comfortable. Mm. Great question. Okay. Uh, coming back to work with postpartum depression is very hard, but oftentimes colleagues don't know what they can do. What would you recommend for manager colleagues to do to help? Those are really good questions. Mm -hmm. I wish I could ask that. Per, you know, I don't know if they can hear me or what. Yeah, they going, can hear but, everything. Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, do people know? I mean, that's the thing. Are, are, are you, who's asking this question, mm -hmm. you know, willing to share? Again, I don't, you know, we're sharers up here, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and I don't know that you have to give all the details, but I think if you're willing, again, this is part of what brings it out, is to say, you know, I struggled. You don't have to give the, just, I struggled, or I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. And then your manager, you know, or, and then you can think about ways to assist your manager helping you. It would be great if you could help me with, or if I could run out to a pediatrician or appointment, or you know what, I'm actually getting treatment for my blank. Mm -hmm. um, would it be okay with you if I left for these appointments? Mm -hmm. Right, you have to ask, you have to ask. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to teach, you have to help people help you. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, if you're willing to share, and again, you don't have to go down the, the, the TMI rabbit hole of every detail, but just, I'm str I, I've been struggling. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, would it be okay if? Mm -hmm. right? And anyone who says no to that, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Great question. Um, could you recommend lifestyle best practices, specifically diet, nutrition, supplements, exercise, etc., to help replenish moms? That's you. <laughs> You're the queen of that. I know. <laughs> I'm the doctor on this. <laughs> You're the lifestyle doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so generally, um, my advice would be to. Ask, get your doctor or go, what's it called? Medi one so medical. One Medical here, um, you know, again, fortunately for us, Google has amazing benefits and One Medical is now our wellness center. So I'm sure you're going to say, get your panel tested. Get your panel tested. Mm, which I so, did and you can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most likely, um, I mean, omegas, so like really good fish oil. You can't really take too much of that. Vitamin D, vitamin B, magnesium, iron, um, like get that's probably the baseline. And then you have, yeah, get, get your, um, hormones checked, make sure your thyroid is functioning. Um, and you'll want to work with your doctor to address it or tinker with it if it's not, because that can, a lot of autoimmune disease flares up postnatally mm -hmm. for women. Um, and you want to, you want to curb it. There's sort of this autoimmune spectrum that a lot of doctors are starting to talk about. Like you don't get that diagnosis of Hashimoto's until you've essentially destroyed your thyroid. But there are a lot of things you can do in the interim mm -hmm. to help. Um, exercise, it's really hard. Exercise is really hard for new moms. Like you're nursing, you're leaking, you're incontinent. Um, <laughs> so cool. It's so mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd say, I would try to find someone who can really help you with your pelvic floor. I am from Goop, guys. Um, and, and in Europe, it's like mandated. You, you get an app, you are, um, they are getting your pelvic floor back into shape. But I would definitely focus on that because it can, you don't want like a prolapsed uterus or bladder later in life. And you definitely want to be able to hold your pee. Mm -hmm. um, you can jump on a, a rebounder too. That's really helpful. <laughs> but there are a lot of physical therapists who will work on your pelvic floor um, and also help you. Like for, for me, because I came to Goop after I became a mom, like a year out, 
I went to work with this woman, Lauren Roxborough, does a lot of foam rolling content with us, and I was still holding myself like I was pregnant, which is very common, but just this, like, preg I looked pregnant, and so she, I, she got me back into alignment, which you can do through Pilates or physical therapy, um, but your organs are all out of whack and stuff, and your body will come back, but you can help. There are a lot of things that you can do to help. I'm by no means the expert, but do read a lot of content. And I would say you mentioned Alejandro Hunger, who mm -hmm. eight years ago significantly changed my life. My mom has an autoimmune disease, which is what brought me to this whole wellness thing. And um, doing the clean every year, I think, mm -hmm. is so important. And I know it's so hard to get your mind over not being able to, for me, drink alcohol. Well, just wine. But, you know, drink a little bit of wine mm -hmm. and um, have a piece of pizza. But it's 21 days. You can certainly do it's it. Awesome. You have given birth. <laughs> you can do it's, a 21-day cleanse. It's easy, day too. And it's nourishing. It's not about deprivation. It's nope. not a calorie thing at all. You can shove as much stuff into your smoothies. You can snack if you're hungry. But it's, fat, it's filling. A, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all about eliminating... Um, potential things that might be aggravating you. So it's also really good if you need to know, like, am I tolerant of gluten? Am I tolerant of dairy? Um, but I and there are supplements that go with it. I, for after my first one, it was it profoundly shifted me and mm -hmm. it reset. I didn't lose. I lost like two pounds when I did it. Twenty one days, and then after, I just dropped all my weight. It was right. weird. It just reset me. Um, but I agree. It's also it's two shakes breakfast and dinner and it's actually really nice not yeah. to have to make dinner for 21 days <laughs> <laughs> and yeah he's just wonderful yeah, yeah. he has a lot of different resources out there too so for diet i would i would mm -hmm. strongly recommend his he's stuff the best. yeah um, and then for exercise too what i found after my second especially right away was it was very hard to get out especially finding classes i'm a class person i love mm -hmm. orange theory and bar method and hot Pilates, but how do I get there if he's supposed to be nursing at that time and they're preset? So I'm a big bar method fan, and if you like bar, um, I really, really believe in it during pregnancy. Um, it just keeps everything tight and nice, mm -hmm. and it's not too strenuous on you, but it um, they have on, online classes, and they're just as good, I swear yeah. it. I'm not the type of person who can work out at home, and this has really changed for me, especially because I travel for work. Yoga and Glow, I think you guys have a program with them. They're yeah. good. There are a lot of good streaming. It's a good idea. Yoga Glow, Tracy Anderson. Yeah, Bar. Yoga Anderson's good. So. Can I just say walking? I'm, yeah, I'm walking. a basic person. <laughs> here. Like, I'm ready to walk. I mean, yeah. I live in New York City, so yeah. you can walk to work. Yeah. You know, just like walking, like get those yeah. 10,000 steps. In. Yeah. I, I'm so basic. I can't. I no, can that's great. Barely do it. I was going to say for the others. You can do it with your baby ball. too. Yeah. Drop yeah. that baby on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I had significant postpartum depression and took short term disability leave after my maternity leave. Do you have advice for sharing or not sharing with colleagues why I was on leave for so long? My colleagues assume I extended my maternity leave and was lucky, quote unquote, when my experience was terrible. Oh my terrible. God. Just invite them to stay home with the baby. <laughs> I mean, even in the uh, best scenario. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think that's very personal. Mm -hmm. I think you have to decide how much you're willing um, to put yourself out there. And again, I don't think you have to give all the information, but um, you know, if you're sensing that people feel kind of, um, are looking at you kind of like, uh, you know, you with the extra maternity leave, mm -hmm. you know, you, you might, if, if you have the opportunity or maybe you make the opportunity to address it and say, you know, I had a really difficult time. I, my extra leave really had to do with kind of a medical issue. Mm -hmm. Again, postpartum depression is a, me mental illness is medical. Mm -hmm. so. This is a medical problem. And mm -hmm. when I write notes, I do a lot of uh, you know, letters for disability. Mm -hmm. um, I may be a psychiatrist, but I, these are medical problems. Mm -hmm. And it has to be addressed as such and considered as such. And I think sharing that you had a medical problem, you know, which was why you were out, you don't have to go into the details. You don't, again, you, you can choose how much you want to share. Mm -hmm. But I think reconceptualizing this as a medical issue is important because I think that lets us off the hook. Like, I'm not just weak or... Um, uh, defective, but this is really, it's a real mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And um, you can say as much or as little, but I think that's up to, to how much you're willing to share. And Yeah. It's so hard not to be ashamed by it, though. Shame is, oh, I know. How do we get rid of that? Conversation. Yeah. yeah. We're doing it. And brave okay. people, I think, stepping up and saying, yeah. this happened to me. Yeah. And, like, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I know celebrities are doing it. Yeah, I think the more so, we bring it into general conversation, the better, um, and recognize that it's that it's a difficult time for anybody. 
it's not love at first sight. I mean, sometimes it is, but a lot of times it takes a while before you kind of fall in love with a kid or know what to do or mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have like postpartum? Like, are there support groups here? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, excellent. If not, we'll do we have a that. go link for that or? Sorry, getting the benefit. Go link if you just Google mom support or MoMA mom support group there. Okay, MoMA mom support group. It's so important to find a cohort. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. um, it's very validating, and mm -hmm. then the shame level goes yeah. down because you're like, you had that, you feel this mm -hmm. way. I mean, because you know, it, it's hard to do, and it's hard to be in the park. I always say, women in the park, they don't mean to lie, but mm -hmm. or Instagram, whatever. Everyone mm -hmm. looks good. Yeah. So it's hard to sort of break through that veneer of of mm -hmm. what you think. You think everybody else has it easier, mm -hmm. better. They know what to do, and they're just as terrified and mm -hmm. unsure. And mm -hmm. um, tired. But how you and tired, and how you get the conversation going. So when you have a moms group, um, hopefully it's a group where there's honesty and authenticity, where you can really share and validate each other, mm -hmm. so that you can say, "Yeah, it's it's really hard." And free sharing, you know, I think yeah. too. I'm very vocal and at war, like about my experience as a mom, mm -hmm. and and I feel like people need to talk about it so that to people who are pregnant or thinking about it, mm -hmm. being like, "There's just so, I mean, like I was so mad at my friends when I had the yeah. ba my baby, and mm -hmm. I was like, why did no one tell me this, like any of this? They want to scare you. Hemorrhoids yeah. and yeah. Oh. like, just, you're like, heads up, like I could have, yeah. like, <laughs> sorry. No, but. no. Yeah. But, but that goes for the emotional too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But no one yeah. talks about yeah. it, and so you are left again in shame. Yeah, I always say, I give. Get the tux. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you see even Chrissy Teigen just posted right after she had the second baby, baby. Um, Asian pair underwear, so the little mesh netting sometimes you see on pairs. Yeah. She took a picture of herself postpartum with her, well, the, the hospital pair. underwear on, and I mean the comments on it were just, yeah, yeah why is no one talking about this? Well, that's the, um, actually, I'm, I, a, a co-author and I are writing a new book yes. called how come no one told me? Yes, because Brilliant. that is the refrain. Yeah, um, and it has—it's the emotional side of pregnancy and postpartum. Yeah, and because no one talks about it, so the yeah. idea is let's—all these questions are actually answered in the book. Mm -hmm. We talk about, bef you know, from the minute you're pregnant, and and sort of like what you don't know and what you need to know. It's mm -hmm. like the need to know stuff. What, what to expect in for the physical? Mm -hmm. We want to do for the emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes out tux. in a year, next yep. Mother's Day. That's right. 2019. So everybody get planning on that. Yeah. I, I always say I, I'm certainly, you know, somebody that folks come to when they're about to get pregnant or they did get, you know, and I've got the whole email and everything. I tailor it to every single person. But I always started off with saying, oh, it's the best. It's the worst. But it's the best. It's the best. It's the and craziest the learning worst. experience. Yeah, like it's the, the learning best curve and the worst. is intense. Right. And that's the pendulum swings some days really quickly in between those two things and sometimes oh. stays for longer in the euphoria. But it is, and if people care to ask, I will say, here's why it's the best and here's why it's the worst. But oftentimes people don't always want to know. Mm -hmm. well, and can they retain it? That's yeah. the other thing I always yeah. wonder because when I used to go give lectures to the new parents group, I would I had to bust my way in in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I would say like, can I come and just give a little preview of what postpartum yeah. might be like? And they're like, uh, no, because we don't <laughs> want to scare those people. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You have to tell people what it what it could be mm -hmm. like and not think of that as you know like mm -hmm. I felt like the Grim Reaper yeah. as opposed <laughs> to just like this just information. Yeah, yeah. just being honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, at almost nine months postpartum, I still feel the loss of time with my. L O little one little one oh um, when I'm at work what can I do to feel better about being at work trying to rationalize it I need to work for my family but it's not helping with the sadness of lost opportunity cost time with my baby mm. Mm. I know so it's, yeah it's hard it's I mean but it's also I'll just talk about how I think about it for myself which I also definitely need to work and I do love to work one, I like. I'm like the universe has created enough of a support network for me to be able to work, and I'm gonna like lean into that. Mm -hmm. Like I love my nanny; she is like my mother, mm -hmm. everyone's mother, um, and so that makes me feel better that my child is surrounded by love. But also, I'm like I need to model. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna model for my boys what it is to have a mom who works. Like I, I feel in some like spiritual karmic. Like, they, they chose me. Mm -hmm. They get it. Um, and this might not be true of you, but I am not, like, I'm not 
wasn't put here. I'm not like a on the floor playing mom. I've given my I've let myself off the hook for that. But also, um, like I'm I'm good at work and I'm a good mom and it's not perfect. It doesn't look perfect. Um, but I think it's like allowing for the messiness and allow like I you have to let yourself off the hook. Um, it's not lost opportunity. It's like you are also having a life. You're showing your kids that there's more outside of the world than them, too, which is important. And I would add um, quality over quantity, Yeah, which is cliche but very true, um, or at least I tell myself that. And it sounds like, you know, I mean, it's important that when you're with, when you're with them, look, if you're with them and you're lamenting the loss of time or you're having regret, when you're with them, or you're so guilty when you're with them, then there's a different problem. Mm -hmm. Then you got to address that, right? Mm -hmm. You're not able to mm -hmm. put it aside and be with them. So when you're there, be there. Mm -hmm. And when you're at work, be at work. Mm -hmm. And you can still be you know, checking in. But you, you have to be present where you are. Okay. And then when you're home with them, be with them. But if that's really, um, if that's hard, then you have to kind of work through this because most people aren't home with their kids. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, this is in our country, we two working families yeah. is the norm. And um, I don't think kids are any worse off because of it. I think to your mm -hmm. point, modeling and showing them. I remember so distinctly when I was, um, when my older daughter was um, four, she was in the bathtub. I was running to the hospital. I was on call. And I said, oh, I have to go to work. I'm so sorry to leave you. And she looked at me and said, why do you say that? You like your job. You like it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, she just left me off. She let me off the hook. Mm -hmm. And I thought, don't do this to my kids. Mm -hmm. Don't make that. Like, she's right. I love what I do. And I love mm -hmm. to work. And I love my kids. And I love to be at home when I'm at home. But I would not be a good stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd be a disaster. Me too. It's the I hardest have, job. Hardest job. I have such admiration. And I, the women who stay home and do this and want to do it and love doing it, great. It, it's just complicated. You have to figure out the whatever the formula is for yourself, and there's mm -hmm. no right, wrong, or perfection. Mm -hmm. It's just you got to figure out what works for you and you in your family context. Yeah. But the guilt enough, the regret, the shame, it's yeah. so wasteful. There's a. I went to this um, mom's group after I had my first, and um, she said something that was I really needed to hear. And she was like, "Think about your childhood and like your happiest memories," and. My happiest memories were like running wild in the woods with my brother and I grew up in Montana and she was like, how many of your happiest memories were your parents in attendance for? And not that many. Like I have amazing parents and they were present, but like she was like, your child, unfortunately, like, like you are at the center of their world right now, but like their life extends far beyond you and you don't need to put yourself in the center of their story constantly, mm. which like they have their own lives. Which is difficult. It's kind of, yeah. kind of broke my heart, but I needed to hear it. And and I will say that <laughs> we do have resources. Um, so if you are feeling still really down about it and missing your child, um, you know, to talk to your manager, talk about a flexible schedule if that's possible. I agree with you. We live in Bay Area, New York, L.A. Two working, you know, two uh, a double working household is very common, and yet the culture hasn't kept up, up with it. I always say school ends at two. Right. Who's going to pick my kid? Right. Work doesn't end at two. What is this all about? So, you know, as we as the things hopefully shift and change, but, you know, there is flexibility at Google, so hopefully you can um, talk to your manager <laughs> about it. Let's do um, one more, and then we can close things out. Um, mm. So I know I want to do two more because the next one looks really good. But, okay, can you speak more to how physical health and lifestyle behaviors impact mental health? Oh. So intertwined. Yes. Um, I think that it's probably false that we separate. Yeah. Them, oh, mm -hmm. right? absolutely. And Mind that's what the Clarity it. Cleanse is about. So, mm -hmm. great question. I would certainly read it. Um, but yeah. No, I, I, I think B. Yeah. Uh, vitamin B. Vitamin B. Right. I think you want to be physically well. Mm -hmm. So um, and not so stressed. You want to minimize stress, maximize self-care, mm -hmm. taking care of yourself. It's not selfish. It is self-preserving, self-nourishing, like the you know oxygen mask. You're no good to anybody else if you're not okay, mm -hmm. but you're no good to yourself if you're not physically well enough, mm -hmm. and I think that helps you be as mentally well enough. Um, again, you don't have to be perfect. Everything doesn't have to be exact, but 
I think that um, they're just so intertwined mm -hmm. that um, that that you, you have to address both. And I think that that becomes a problem because people, you know, everyone knows to work out, go to the gym. I'll be walking. Everyone else will be at the gym. <laughs> but but um, but but mental health has to also be addressed. It's kind of like I said to someone the other day who said, "Wait, is therapy like gym for your mind? Mm -hmm. It's like going to the gym for your mind." Yeah. It's like brushing your teeth. Right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, not everyone's going to go to therapy, though I kind of think they should. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. I think it, almost anyone can use it because we all have past, we all have baggage, we all have things to work out mm -hmm. so that we don't revisit them on our children, as mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that you want to be as well emotionally, mentally as you can, mm -hmm. and that will help your physical health. They, mm -hmm. they, they work in concert, mm -hmm. and to ignore one or to only focus on the other is short-sighted yeah and again with google we have um look up and go to moma and look up concern we have programs that we can certainly um get therapy sessions and it's really helpful i personally use it and talk about it openly because i think it's so important and i there have been many times when i've been talking to my husband and i'm like i'm on my way to therapy i have nothing to say and then i leave like that's oh. the best session i've ever had it's better um, when you have it nothing is. to say yeah and i just put a plug in for that it's not yes. about the content yeah it's about everything else yeah so, so anyway fine. so fine. great question though and then last um, you mentioned that this can affect dads too. My husband has had severe depression, severe depression and anxiety since the birth of our twins. Despite medication and therapy, he feels very isolated. What resources are available for dads, and what can I do to help, especially if I'm when I'm struggling myself? Mm. Awesome, question. great question. Um, one of my fellow board members at Postpartum Support International, Danny Singley, this is his thing. He's in um, San Diego, I think but he's Mr. Postpartum Dad. He's a great guy, and he writes a ton about this. Mm -hmm. And we also have somebody at the Motherhood Center, Chuck Schaefer, who works with the dads. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important. Again, they, dads who are struggling need a cohort. They mm -hmm. need other mm -hmm. dads or other partners who are struggling, and um, they uh, you know, need the validation, need the treatment. It sounds like he's getting some treatment, but, but you need the resources. So I'd say, going back to that, um, postpartum.net. The, that's the website for Postpartum Support International. Dads are a big part of it. Families, it's, it's, it's again, it's about, it started about moms, mm -hmm. but it's really families, and now we've really, we're big into dads right now, into mm -hmm. helping dads find the resources they need. There's a, um, I think it's a weekly chat for dads online, so you can be anywhere. There's, there's just great resources on the website, so postpartum.net. Um, Danny Singley, Chuck Schaefer, these are some of the guys who are writing about it out there nationally, and there are others who do it. But again, search for your community. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, to the mom, you know, who's, who's also struggling, this is easy, because sometimes you can't even get online to look for it if you're so down and out. But so if you can find those resources, just help him get to the resources, um, a place like Postpartum Support International will take it from there, mm -hmm. will help you. And remember, I think that sleep deprivation is a, is a essentially yeah. a mental illness mm -hmm. totally. um, and I think it's like it puts everything in a different context I mean it creates crisis too and there's nothing it's, it sucks because there's nothing to really do about it when you're trying when you have kids who don't sleep but I think even just remembering that mm -hmm. in the back of your mind it's not permanent um, that it's not permanent but that it is pernicious mm -hmm. um, helps in terms of like understanding what also might be going on Thank you, all the people on the Dory, for asking these very personal questions. Um, I'm realizing why maybe people in person didn't want to ask so many questions and everyone's not as open as I am to talk about all this stuff. But a huge thank you to you guys um, for coming from L.A. and from New York. Every Thursday, Goop has a podcast. Elise is usually hosting unless it's Gwyneth herself. So I'm sure you have a lot of interesting guests coming up. And there are some other great podcasts that are in relationship to being a parent and um, hormones and whatnot. So please check those out if you haven't. And then obviously, Catherine, thank you so much for coming. And when I'm in New York, I certainly am coming to the Motherhood Amazing. Center no matter what. Yeah. And I would encourage other people and to our New York Googlers who are listening to go visit as well. Yeah. Um, and is the best way to do that just to visit your website? And is yeah. there an email alias There's, or pick up the phone and call? Yep. Um, you can call. We have an info site. You'll get to Paige Bellenbaum, who's our program director. Great. Um, we'll be happy to, to have you come and see. Great. And then a new book you. in yeah, next year. a year. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.